In this video, we'll be going over how to add jump animations and attack animations to your sprite in Game Builder Garage. I'm really happy with how both of these turned out, especially the hit animation. I love how he puts his club above his head, and then swings, so it's actually it's two frames of animation. And we can see that it even works there. In the last tutorial, I showed you guys how to create a walk animation, just like this. And if you haven't subscribed already, make sure to subscribe to stay up on the latest Game Builder Garage tutorials. Here we can see everything that we're going to cover in this tutorial, how it'll look at the very end. Uh, this might look a little bit chaotic to you, but if you watch the last tutorial, you'll know that really the only new thing is this section down here. Uh, not too much has changed up above. And I should mention that this sprite of Mario is from the NES bootleg Grandad. Uh, so that is where the sprite comes from. First off, let's go ahead and modify some of our top code that we did in the previous video to account for what we're about to do. We're going to want to copy and paste all of these ands, one for each picture, so we're going to get three more of those. And this is so we can turn off our walk cycle animation at any point in time. We're going to delete these chains on all of them. And then take your output of your first and, tie it into input one on your second, and then tie in your output to your sprite. So we're just gonna cross them right over, just like so. Now, in order to disable these, we are going to grab a knot. I would somewhat centralize this, that way you remember, hey, it's for these. Go ahead and take your other inputs and tie it into the output of your knot. So when this knot gets power, it's going to disable this whole walk cycle. Let's go ahead and first set up our jump animation. I'm going to map it to B. Grab your B. Now you're going to map this B to a couple different things here. You're going to map it to your jump on your player, to your knot for your idle animation. That way this idle animation will not play when jump is pressed. And then you're going to map it all the way up here to your knot on your walk cycle. As well as this should make your sprite visible, so map it down here. Next, you're going to take your blue line from your texture down here and link it to your objects with all the rest of your textures. If we go ahead here and test this out, we can see that we've got our jump and we can be moving our analog stick and it doesn't affect our jump. The only thing is you can technically hold jump on the ground, but depending on how it works in your game, that should not be an issue and that's more of a limitation factor with this game. Now let's go ahead and set up our animation for both of these sprites. We're gonna start with our second frame, so that way if anyone only wants a one sprite animation, they can see how to do that, and then afterward, we'll add our initial frame in. I'm gonna map the button to Y. Go ahead and grab your Y, and then we're gonna link this to basically the exact same spots. Um, I'm gonna move this over here just so we know what's what for now. Okay. You're gonna take your Y, link it up to your sprite, link it up to your knot up top for your walk cycle, and for your knot for your idle animation. And once again, don't forget to connect your texture to your object. If we go ahead now, we can see that he plays his one frame attack animation where he just puts his club down on the ground. Now personally, I really like the look of where he has it above him and then he swings it. So let's go ahead and add in that now. If you're just going to use the single frame, skip ahead to where we add in the damage hitbox. Let's go ahead and copy our button that we've already made, hit our settings, and do on press. This will only trigger the instant the button is pressed. So we'll have a split frame where we can put in our own animation. Go ahead and make a timer and put it, uh, let's put it directly in front. In the settings here, we are going to turn our first output off completely, pull up in the calculator, and I liked using 0.1 for the second one down here. That determines how long our sprite will hold the object above him before he releases it. Let's go ahead and link it to our first sprite and link our sprite to our object. Now, we can see that he puts it above his head for 0.1 seconds and then swings his club. And we can even do that while in the air. Now we're gonna add our damage hitbox for when we swing our sword or our club or your gun, whatever you're using. I'm gonna be using this destroy object one, that's a hammer, uh, but you can also use the launch object if you're doing something like a gun per se, something with projectiles. There's more about that in the guided lessons. Risky Run shows off how to do the, this sort of melee one 
and then Alien Blaster shows off how to do the projectile based one. In the settings of our destroy object, we're going to change our connection point. We are going to change this to X minus and Z minus. Now this might vary based on where exactly you want your hitbox at. We're going to keep it a box and for now we'll make it visible. That way you can see where exactly it's at. The next thing you're going to want to do in here is turn off box. Especially if you're using box like I am for my my sprite is on a box, so if I would engage this, it would immediately kill my player. But if you want boxes still, you can use other things, such as the crates and the shipping containers for your boxes. You can really go ahead and just turn on whatever you want in here, whatever you need, and just don't turn on box if you're mapping it to a box like I am. We're gonna go ahead here and map it to our button. Now which button we map it to is going to matter here. So our first one is when it's being held. So if we map it to this, whenever we're holding down Y, our damage box will be there. But that's not exactly what I want. I only want it to be active whenever I initially press the button. So once per time. So I'm gonna link it to our on press. And do not forget to link it to your person. I'm gonna link it to the person, just that way the person's a little smaller and I can kind of better judge that. With our sprite visible, we can see that this is where the hitbox lays. Hitboxes, as, I can, as I've been able to tell so far, are a little bit glitchy compared to what I would like. They really, they really need to be the same size as your person because they don't map relatively to where you put it if they're not. Once you've got that how you want it, make sure you turn your box invisible and then you're all set to go. And with that, I hope this tutorial has helped you out. And if you have any games that you would like us to play, go ahead and leave them down in the comments below and we'll check them out. Every week we're trying to play your guys' levels. Thanks for watching.